In Sydney, the first aircraft of the day is in a hurry. 1,000 flights will come and go once curfew lifts. It's a national network linking patches of tarmac and its central hub is shut between 11 at night and 6 in the morning. In charge of the first Melbourne flight is Captain Elise Fordham. Favourite time of the day to fly is the early morning. In the early morning it's lovely and calm and yeah, just very peaceful. Elise flies between the two great cities four times a day. That's more than 4,000 kilometres in the air. QF 401763 Sydney, cleared to Melbourne by 16 right Dena departure. It's going to be a clear day. It looks, uh, there's no cloud out there or very little cloud. And we've just got to be careful of Centre Point Tower, really, to the north. Um, a lot of traffic in the area. If we have any problems. There is a great uh, responsibility uh, flying an aircraft with all the souls on board. And it's just something that you become used to, where I suppose maybe like an ambulance driver or a policeman, you can handle pretty much whatever's thrown at you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, the captain speaking. My name is Elise Borden. With me on the flight deck today is First Officer Nathan Placer. We would like to extend a warm welcome aboard to you on Qantas Flight 401 to Melbourne. We'll be underway very shortly, just waiting for final cargo loading to be completed. It's 401, no request pushback. Good morning. Push approved. OK, so let's go, shall we? On a typical working day, 150 domestic flights connect Sydney and Melbourne. It's the world's second busiest corridor, only beaten by planes between Rio and Sao Paulo in Brazil. It can feel like a traffic jam because there is just so much air traffic going into Sydney and Melbourne and only a certain amount of tarmac that the aircraft can land on. So often we get holding, uh, which involves a racetrack type of pattern to go round and round in circles because we simply can't pull over and park the brakes. Captain Elise now has 75 minutes to get her passengers to Melbourne on time. As 170 tonnes of metal climbs, a crucial network watches over a lease. Qantas 401, you can cancel the speed restriction below 10,000. My Qantas 401 on your frequency. Making sense of a wall of chatter is Jeff Whiteley and the team in Melbourne. They look over half the nation's airspace once flights leave local control. The traffic in the Melbourne terminal area is building up. You've got uh, all the customers airborne. The traffic is uh, endless, really. Once the day begins in Sydney from 6am, the traffic just begins Sydney, Melbourne, Melbourne, Sydney. By 7am, a line of aircraft waits to land. Each one's neatly uh, spaced with about the three minutes between each and every one, and that'll just continue for the next few hours. Melbourne, waiting for the first flight, a fleet of yellow taxis jockeying for prime position. Baggage handlers load and unload 35,000 pieces a day. Qantas 401 final approach in Melbourne. It's just turned north of the field, aligning itself to runway 16. That's Qantas 401, so basically out of Sydney just after 6 and landing Melbourne quarter past 7. In the past five years, flights between Sydney and Melbourne have soared 20% to more than 50,000 a year. This route and all highways of flight will expand as our economy and population grow. But what would all that traffic look like if you could see it from above? These are the GPS traces of every aircraft above our heads on a typical day. In the early hours, long-haul flights cruise across the night sky. At 6 a.m., Sydney's curfew lifts and the airspace erupts. Then the west comes online. Flights leave Perth for mines to the east and north. 
From coast to coast, air corridors fill, floating lanes jammed with traffic, mainly taking us to the nation's edges. It's a remarkable image that only fades when Sydney Airport shuts at 11pm.